Saturday morning on the weekend of series weekend. Um, it's super early, it's about five o'clock in the morning um, and it's freezing cold. I think it's about seven degrees this morning. Uh, but we're camping at Inskip Point this weekend. So looking forward to seeing some blue skies and some warm weather. Uh, Shane's already up there. He went up there last night and um, set up camp. Um, I'm heading up this morning just, just for the one night to come back Sunday. Uh, we've got some friends up there, very good friends, Toby and Yaz. Uh, so it'd be good to see Toblerone and Yazzy. I uh, haven't seen them in a long time, so that'd be great. Um, and Derek and Sue from Just Vanning It are up there as well. So I uh, think they just finished a trip around Australia in their van. So it um, be good to catch up with them and, and, and hear all the war stories from around Australia. And it's something that Shane and I are looking forward to doing. So we've got about four or five hours of driving ahead of me. So I'm going to get stuck into it. I'm stopping at, at, at Mum and Dad's and get pick up all the rods and stuff. So we can have a bit of a fish up there, hopefully. Um, yeah, hopefully we see some good weather and, and get out at about and, and show you Inskip Point. It's one of our favourite places um, along that TY Beach, Double Island Point, uh, Rainbow Beach, Inskip and Fraser is, is, is where Shane and I spend most of our time. So, um, it's a great spot. So looking forward to it and hope you enjoy. I'll get stuck into this drive. Talk soon. YouTube channel just gone looking. Yeah. Quick check in, lookers. Uh, just stopped for a coffee and some couple of hashies. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why, my coffee tastes like hotcakes. Figure that one out. I'll take it as a win, I guess. It is like blanket fog. Um, for, for the last hour of driving, so um, hopefully that means that uh, really dense fog means blue skies after. It's still about an hour or so in it before I get to mum and dad's, get all the rods and fishing gear, um, and then another couple of hours of rainbow and it's up to skip. So Whew. here we go, check in soon. Hey, 
Lucas, I'm up here. Uh, just stopped at Rainbow Beach, just at the Shell Servo, to grab something to eat um, and some bait. Uh, and now I'm just heading up to uh, Inskip Point to hopefully to find Shane and that. I've got the track that they're on or the campsite that they're on, so see if I can find that. Um, he's not, can't get onto him, so might be a little bit of a, a little bit of a track around to, to find them. Um, so I'll spin you around and I'll uh, just sort of video on the way from Rainbow Beach out to Inskip Point to the campgrounds and that. Um, we might have seen a little bit of Rainbow Beach on our TUR Beach episode, but we're going to do another trip up here um, and probably stay up at a house uh, in Rainbow Beach and do Double Island Point as well. So I won't show you too much in here for the moment. But yeah, on the way up Inskip, Inskip Point, here we go. So just coming in the back way around Rainbow Beach uh, towards out to Inskip. Uh, if you go down the road that IGA is on uh, and keep following up, I think it's the second right after you turn onto that road. Um, and this is sort of the back way uh, where the industrial area is. Uh, just grab you up here. Um, and I was talking about, I think on one of the episodes, uh, the Rainbow Beach Mechanic and the uh, Underbody Car Wash, which is on this road. Um, so just up here, just on the left, we've got the uh, Underbody Car Wash. And straight across the road from it on the right, got the Rainbow Beach Mechanics. Um, so that's on the road. You go turn down the road that IGA's on, uh, and then the second right, and then it's just sort of the back road on the industrial area. Um, so Rainbow Beach Mechanics help us out. Uh, when I bent one of my shockies on Fraser Island uh, last year and had to, last year and year before, I had to come back and uh, they fixed up the shockies straight away, had me turned around and back on the island on the same day. So yeah, it was really good of them. And the underbody car wash is an absolute must when you spend some time on the beach. So, uh, and then the back road, this road, all the way out to Inskip Point. A couple of campgrounds on the way up, uh, on the left and right. And then when you get right up the end, there's some caravan sites. Uh, and then, of course, the point uh, to jump across the Fraser Island. Hey! Yeah, good. I'm, I'm here, so I'm just oh. trying. I'm just trying to find you. Have you pulled into the campground? Not yet. No. I'm, so I'm coming up. Oh. I'm coming up Inskip Road, and I've punched in Sarawak Camp Track. Yeah, it's the last one on the right hand side. Last one on the right hand side. Is it on set like sand? Or I need to let tyres down, shit, or? No, no, no. It's on sand, but it's hard sand. It rained last night, so it's just pretty hard packed. Yeah, all right, nice. Well, I'll walk out in now, just talking to the fucking exit. That's the easiest road. Yeah, it's sweet. I'm just walking out onto the road. Nice. So you can see me. All right. Yeah, I just keep cruising up and you'll see me. All right, mate. Okay, it's easy. Wait. Beautiful Inskip Point. Oh, I love this place. So good. Such a good day. Where is the big fella? There he is. It's cracking it. Good to see you, bro. Hey, you Looking fresh. Yeah, thanks, mate. I'll, I'll get some lunch here so I'm gonna have something to eat. And yeah, yeah, I'll go down and grab my seat and then we'll come back up. Sweet, man. sort of scattered around I think so I'm gonna get out and have something to eat. The chicken schnitzel sandwich just cooled down so and then uh I'll check back in. Probably have a few beers and introduce everyone. You in skip point. So look as we're up here we've got up here um all set up got my swag set up um I'll introduce to everyone Sue up how you going Carla how are you yeah, Jasmine and Tobler, ain't? How you going? The majority of the fun's gonna happen tomorrow morning, I'd reckon, for us. Um, but for now, we're just gonna hang around on the campsite, drink a few beers, 
um, probably put the fire on in about an hour or two and then uh, start cooking, so catch up with you then. What we got? 2.2 kilo rib roast. And uh, Derek's going to get some more meat. And we're going to do a party camp oven tonight. So probably going to get a little lamb roast or another little little beef roast. I'm going to put it in the same pot as this. Um, and then we're going to do a heap of veggies and stuff in the other pot. So we're going to have two camp ovens going and feed the whole campsite. It's going to be good. I like the sound of that. Yeah, you got some uh, pepper and mustard spice rub from the from the butchers as well. So I'm going to layer that over it and see how we go. Yeah. Yeah. We just got the food down, it's got a good good amount of heat on it. Um, got what, about five kilos worth of meat in that yeah. camp oven, so I uh, got a big uh, rib roast and a, and a lamb roast in there as well, so gonna have a good, good party party oven feed tonight. So right. we thought we'd just have a little bit of chat about the rigs. So a um, couple of different setups. Um, obviously, I'm just here with Derek from Just Fanning It. How you going? Derek. We uh, caught up a couple of times and yep. played up a little bit together. And uh, Derek, Derek's uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you just got you just got back from uh, around the Australia trip. Yeah. Well, about a half a lap, and half a lap. we'll set back off again now and see where the wind takes us. Really, but yeah, yeah. super excited to be back on the road. Yeah. So yeah. So it was awesome to uh, to catch up with Derek and Sue and uh, and Carla and uh, Chris. Chris, yep. sorry, Chris. Two thirsty travellers. Yeah, two thirsty travellers. Um, so yeah, Derek and Sue are up here just started uh, getting a few weekends away while they're back. Yeah, we head up, uh, we go ahead north, um, slowly make our way north, and then the plan is to try and go to Tassie for November, December, January, and um, all obviously COVID. So we'll travel up sort of north until the middle of October, and then we'll do a UE and head back down to Melbourne if COVID allows us, and then get on the ferry over to Tassie for three months, and then hopefully onto WA next year. That's the plan, at least. That can always change. That's one thing you learn on living on the road. Of course, plans always change. So yeah, yeah. So and obviously the weekend of series, uh, we, we heard they were up here for the weekend, so we yeah. thought we'd jet up here and catch up. Why not? And as soon as we heard we're up here, we I've never been to Eden Skip, and yeah. yeah, it's good. It's a it's a really good spot for um, getting out of busy for the weekend. Absolutely, I do believe it's a popular spot. So for sure. Yeah. Well, you just got to look around. We we'll just do a bit of a pan around. You see how many people are up here. Yeah, it's pretty busy. So yeah, good stuff. So we'll show you the, the two rigs. Obviously, mine, mine's been focused on the channel a little bit, but um, mine's more of a sort of a weekend to set up. And then we'll we'll go over to the uh, yeah, for sure. Yasmin's going to take the camera. Thank you, Yazzie. Thanks, Yaz. Um, so yeah, and then we'll we'll go have a look at what what my dream rig is. Well, <laughs> between that and the 200, of course, I think it's everyone's yeah. dream rig. So um, yeah, Derek's got a nice 70, 79 series set up with the van and the uh, and the uh, boat loader on top and the yep. little tinny and everything. So. So we'll go through that, but I've just got the canopy on. I'll just shut this. Yeah, so it's a Rhino Alu Cab canopy from Bush Company and the rack on top. Oh, so this is Bush Company, eh? That's Bush oh, Company, wow. yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, so I did a heap of research um, and I was looking at a lot of fiberglass canopies and, and I, I didn't like how they just had the window sort of cut yeah, out. Yeah. So what I liked about this is the full side doors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and on the Hiluxes, or well, I suppose on all of them, they actually bolt down. We'll pan in there a little bit later on, but they, they bolt into the, the actual standard 
um, tie down mounts that come oh, in the tub. Oh, really? So it's okay. super, super sturdy. Um, yeah. And the, uh, we'll, we'll do a product review on it uh, a little bit later on and we'll go right through it, but um, we'll just sort of show the concept and the setup for now because it's not definitely not nowhere near what Derek's is <laughs> at the moment. It's still, it's still a work in progress, but yeah, what I liked about it is it's got, it's got the full side doors, the full rear door. Um, yeah, it's got that, the eh? pos positive pressure vents as well, so I've got no lights in there at the moment, so it's going to be a little bit dark in there. It's good because you can't see all the <laughs> all the crap packed in there for this weekend. Um, but yeah, so I liked it how they got the, the, the full side doors. Mm. Um, I'm going to get the they got a little shelf that they get built in there as well. Yeah. Um, yep. So w what it hasn't got in there at the moment is is the dual battery setup and the 12 volt system. So that's sort of the next in the plan. So. Um, Hilux have the spare tray in the front under, underneath the bonnet. Yeah, they got the room for it, yeah. Yeah, the room for it up there. So I'll get the dual battery set up there. I'll just got an AGM sort of battery set up. Um, DC to DC charger underneath the bonnet. Um, and then on the rack up top, I'll put a uh, fixed solar panel yeah. on the rack up the yeah. top and, and feed it straight into the DC, yeah, DC charger up front. Yeah. Um, and then run the power back into this shelf here um, and put a 12 volt control box in there. So in the shelf inside too, I'm going to sort of mount an iPhone um, holder because I've got the quad lock iPhone case. Yep, yep. So I'm going to put a quad uh, quad lock sort of desk mount in there, fix it, and then put the wireless charger, and then put my GoPro batteries and all that yep. sort of stuff in there as well. So. I, I must be honest with you, these are becoming quite a popular canopy in alternative to the full like sort of aluminium um, yeah. gull wing canopy. And um, I can see why this is better than like a fiberglass uh, canopies your access now uh, I had a Ford Ranger prior to the cruiser which had just an, a fiberglass canopy on and it had the little glass gull wing but nowhere near as much as this and I mean I'm not a tall guy yeah. and you can you know you can get stuff in and out of it so it's actually really really good I have seen another one on the weekend um, by RSI and my mate that has got one of these has got the full kitchen so yeah, they yeah. actually they're getting up there. Yeah. It's actually getting quite um, some serious kits um, for if you don't want to go the full gold wing canopy. Um, yeah, so yeah. Well, I think for, for like for this build for me, it's it's once your battery go in and I get it all wired up and get the 12 volt system, um, we'll, we'll go around the back and have a look in a minute. But it'll be the full draw set up, fridge yep. side. Um, I'll hide the compressor and run the compressor off the 12 volt control box and yep, all that yep, stuff, yep. That stuff as and well. And tell me, um, Tim. What's the what's the payload on top here? What can, how much weight they, can you put they on said, top? They, they said be safe at about two hundred and fifty kilos. Two hundred and fifty kilos. But they, they did it. They did a crush test on it, and it caught three and a half ton. So that's pretty they good. They put so, three and a half ton on the canopy before it flattened. So so I, I had an ALB ascent canopy on my Ford. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, hundred kilos, um, you get static and you get moving yeah, weight, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. moving moving weight was a hundred. I think standing still was 300. Yeah. Um, and you can get a brace kit. And I think that takes it to 150 and to 350. Don't don't judge me on that. I didn't quite do my 100% homework. So this is way better. Yeah. If you want to put a 100 kilo rooftop tent on. Yeah. You know, and, and and I actually I actually looked at those ascent canopies and they come out on the model after this I like so I couldn't ah. get any ascent ones because and I'm, I'm lucky I did actually because I would have bought one of those ascent those ARB ascent ones. And I'm glad I waited and got one of these because I, 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 really I rate these highly. And what do you reckon, um, since you did a bit of homework, what do you reckon the weight of this canopy is? Is it stainless steel, aluminium? What's it's, it? It's, it's all aluminium. Um, they got they got some pretty they got stainless mounts and, okay. and some okay. cast bits in there as well. But it, it'd be around the 300 kilo mark, okay. I think. Okay. I think um, we'll drop the the correct sort of yeah. weights and so, yeah. sort of stuff in the bottom, but but yeah, I, I just couldn't believe the access to it. Like the, yeah. the access is amazing. Like. I'll, well, well, if you want to come around here, guys, well, it is pretty messy, but um, I've got a, a trunk in there, I've got my, my Esky in there, um, and the, the access to the full side and the rear door is, is, is awesome. And obviously that one's also access, like the exact same. Opposite. Yeah, yeah, on the other yeah, side. Yeah. We'll, go, we'll go around in a minute, but yeah. but the shelf that they have, that, 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 that Bush Company do as well, is about about half sort of size. Okay. And it, and it runs in and then straight up. Yep, it's just yep. a sheet sort yeah. of, sheet, you know, uh, bent sheet sort of uh, tray in there um, and I'll put the control the 12 volt control box on the back mm. and then all the accessories sort of in the middle and I run all the lights and I want to yeah. do speakers uh, and the iPhone mount and all that sort of stuff from in there but yeah I thought it was a ripoff. Should we, we'll go, uh, we'll should we talk the about um, the cost of it mate? Yeah so um, I, I got the rack sort of uh, as, as an add-on at the end but um, it was all all up around about 4200 
total. Okay. And that's rack and canopy and all. So an, I think an, a, a, a normal um, uh, fiberglass canopy will be around what, 32? Yeah, 32. 32, 32 and I don't think that's uh, powder coated the same colour or anything no, like that. No, so, and they do, they do, they colour coat, they don't colour coat and they either come in white or black. Okay. Um, so, and, I, and if I did, if I couldn't get it colour coated to this colour, oh, I thought the black was yeah, good. Because I'm going to get a black bar and black separate. Yeah, I think it looks, I think the black, I think sort of the black and white, it looks good, mate. Yeah. Really, really good. So oh. 4200, that's not bad, guys. Like, honestly, yeah. that's that's up there. And yeah, with, with the weight it can take on top is very yeah. important. Um, you've got to take that. So if you ever want to put weight on top of the roof, like, this is the way to go because it's pretty mm. sturdy on top, eh? Hey? Yeah. Can handle the weight. Oh, I built this false floor to go in here. It's just form ply and it's just a bit of marine cover. Yeah. In there. Um, and I was going to do fridge slides and sort of that stuff in there, but I've got to wait, wait, wait till I get the 12 volt control system built in, mm. uh, and then I'll go a full setup. So drawers and fridge slides and all that sort of stuff, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll hide the, the compressor under the wings and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, just a, just an AGM sort of second battery with a with a simple um, solar panel on the on the back rack here, running back to the DC to DC charger, coming back to the control box, and then it's really just a simple 12 volt system with with Compressor, lights, you know, yeah. music, charge your phone, um, and 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 fridge. Yeah, basically. And well, all, that's all, all, really all I'm doing is weekend stuff. Weekend stuff. Yeah. yeah so, so, so you don't really need to spend the the, the expensive stuff. Yeah. You, I mean, you could get away for a week, I reckon. Yeah. You're like comfortable. If you got a, if you got a good DC DC charge, a good solar panel, and you get in the sun, um, honestly, from my experience, like, you should be able to run that fairly fairly good. Yeah. Um, because the fridges will draw between, you know, three to five amps an hour. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And I'll move, I think I'll move the, uh, I'll move the max strap back to this yeah. back rack and then put the solar panel on the side. And yeah. then I'll just, because I want to keep the, as light as possible in the back just because, so yeah, 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 your, 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 um, because I've still got the spare tire under the back and, yeah, it really is just a weekend to set up, so. That's right, mate, and that's that's what it's um, that's that's what you guys are all about. It's just yeah. getting away for two days and, yeah. a, and possibly a week, or you know, um, you don't need excessive stuff to be able to enjoy yourself and get out yeah. and explore and, it's got, um, and have a good time, you know. It's got the uh, I don't, you probably can't see it there because of the light, but it's got the positive pressure vents at the front there too. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so, it's, okay. so it's got it's yeah. Got positive so pressure it's like no, like dust. Uh, keeps dust out. Nice, it. nice little segue for me to grab another drink out before we there go to your car. How good is that? How easy is that? Not struggling? No. And, and before, as I said, I was talking to you before offline and, um, and I was talking about, I went to, to have a look at, I mean, everyone wants a Norway, you know, Norwell, sorry, canopy and all that sort of stuff. So I went to Norway and had a look at removing the tub and putting a canopy base and then putting a Norway canopy and all that sort of stuff on it. It's big money. So I think for this build, um, once I get the 12, 12 volt system and all the fit out in the back and the fridge set up and, and basically so I can go away comfortably in a week yeah. with it, yeah. um, I'll get the suspension because I've got some silly things in the front, some truck pace spaces that some people in blue wouldn't like me to have, but um, I'll get just sort of a two inch lift set around, um, new black bar on the front and black step rails and that'll yeah. be this build finished. Yeah. And yeah. then once once I'm, uh, you know, I'll, lose, I'll use this for a year or two um, and then once I stop getting out of the weekend and sort of the four day Sort of, sort of trips, and I'll start getting into the week, two week, three week, four month, six yeah, month trips. Yeah. Then I think we'll I'll move on and upgrade. But you know, as I said, for three or four days up to a week, this will this this yeah. will, that setup will be fine. I think. I think it's I think it's great. Like you say, keep it simple, and um, get out and just enjoy yourself on weekends. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Instead of just living your life in in, in a big big city like Brizzy. Exactly right. And, yeah, and doing, doing this sort of stuff, having this channel, we've said it before on the channel, it, it just it encourages you and drives you to get out. Yeah. Like, you know, Shane's got his Navara set up there. We've been through that before with the battery and the fridge and his rooftop camper. Um, you see my swag behind me. I'm still in a swag and a stretcher. Like, I, I love it. It's, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. single. I can just roll around in it, no dramas. And I've got, yeah. you know, once I have this fully set up, I'll, I'll, I'll be wrapped for, you know, two to, two to four days. And just by the way, it's great because it is, it's middle of winter. Yeah. And look at us. Yeah. What's the time? Yes. Six o'clock? Yeah, not even. Bloody hell. Great. Got the fire going with the camp oven, so we'll go around to the to the bigger setup, eh? And then come in this way, Andy. <laughs> Everyone's dream. There you go from the baby weekender series setup to the full touring setup. So yeah, so 
Like I said before, I had a Ford Ranger 3.2 um, with a fiberglass canopy, simple setup, um, AGM battery, small little uh, DC to DC charger. We trailed full time last year. Um, yes, it did work, but for full time living, it didn't quite, yeah, get us there. And, and with free camping. Um, so explain that, like, so it saves safe for difference with your Ranger setup, it was more like that. Yeah. Sort of simple yeah. sort of weekend set up into yeah. a week. It had, so sort of that transition between so you can get away for a week and then you want to go full touring. Yeah. And so it was okay, it was okay to get away for a couple few days off um, off grid camping, but then you slowly start battling with batteries and solar and because the DC the, the, the charges are just, you know, I wouldn't say entry level, but sort of a weekender sort of stuff. And then um I did a lot of research, met a lot of people on the road and they explained to you and you can I can tell you now, I can justify the money when you're doing full time. So this is a 79 series 2017 model, GXL, um, built in the 80s I would think, uh, drives like it's built in the 80s, um, very simple, and then uh, we've, we've decided to throw a little bit into this one. So this is full time living guys, like we do this full time, well, this, is, this is our home, or oh, there's our home there. So, so you towed you the car, this caravan yeah. with, this, with the Ranger? Yeah, we did. We did tow the Ranger, uh, but the, the tinny and the, the motor came with this build. So the, the Ford Ranger, we pulled this. Um, and now we've stepped it up a little bit because yeah, we've realised, like, it, yeah. So you started feeling the, the challenges with yeah, the Yeah, the challenges the and, and, uh, uh, and myself and Sue, my wife, uh, we, we want to do more um, uh, free camping. We find just a lot better, like this budget camping, if you want to call it. This was $6.75 a night, but no power, no water. So you, we, uh, for all, a week, you can stay here for 29 days. And with new technology and stuff, you, if you, it is more expensive, but you can move away from the generators and stuff. I'm not saying generators are bad. I'll make behind, just charge my batteries for me. But if you spend the money, you can move away from that and you can be self-sufficient and everything just sort of charges and runs and you can run all this type of stuff, all this type of gear and believe me they're all bigger you can go bigger than this like bigger battery banks and um, guys are putting microwaves in canopies now they're going like they're, they're, you can go another level but to be honest with you we're pretty chuffed with this and it's a big step up from what we had all right now let's start from some say so so, you, bought, you bought the car so before the canopy you bought the car and what and what uh the car i bought it second hand so the canopy came with the car but it was, this was totally empty so yeah. soon i basically kitted this out so just the train no a train canopy yeah but nothing inside the, it was all aluminium so myself and sue actually basically built this in a caravan park on the ground literally <laughs> um so it built out a marine i uh, would like to have done the whole stainless steel the kit fit out but time wasn't on our hand covid plays a bit, big part of stuff availability i'll get on to that in a minute um so we actually had this fridge this is just a brass monkey fridge from um, RTM. Um, a lot of guys run the, um, uh, uh, what do they call them? Can't think of them right now. But Dometic. Oh, the Dometics and the, oh, think of it now. There's another brand out there. But anyway, it's a 65 litre stand-up fridge. We, we like the stand-up fridge, easy access. This is basically cool drinks, beers, um, and if we do catch fish, we put some fish in there. Um, <laughs> when? Yeah. <laughs> and then just above that, we've got USB port, switch panel, um, I tech World 2000 mod inverter um, uh, switch so I can switch the inverter on from here and then you got the Cimarron Pico 1 screen which that will tell me exactly what is going on with the batteries how much power I'm drawing um, and you can you can step up from that and it, where it can actually tell you what kitchen item is drawing what current I didn't go quite that far I just wanted to know what was what I had left what I was drawing what the Sun's putting in um, we move over this little thing here, man. Little travel buddy, 12 volt marine oven. Absolute bloody become my best friend. We've only just put this in. $300, um, I really, uh, it's something I would, even if you're going away, for, like you can do. We've done um, lamb shanks in it. It draws 10 amps an yeah, hour. Yeah, you saw them before the tray that you got in Yeah, it. this was extra. So you can pull that up. This is the bigger travel buddy. You do get one smaller. And you can, we've done lamb shanks in it. We've done, um, lasagnas in it, ribs in it, everything like that mate, and it draws 10 amps an hour and it goes up to 200 degrees and it's even got a timer on it so you can set it on a timer. Yeah, you can see the, show yeah. the panel there. Um, you can see it, yeah, drawing 10 amps, so the fridge is drawing 4.1 and that's drawing about, if I turn that off, you should see it just drop off. Yeah, it drops off, then thereabouts. And then um, we've just put the pull out 
kitchen in. So I'll get around to the technical side now, um, but we don't run gas anymore. We run induction cooktop. This is just a Kmart induction cooktop for $49. Got a 240 power point up here that's running off the inverter so I can run um, the induction cooktop. I can run Seuss coffee machine and the frother all from here, which I'll get into in a minute. This is just pull out. Um, yeah, it's great to pour some drinks, chop some stuff. It's great. Excellent. Love it. So that was from MW Toolbox. I think I paid $5.50. Um, like I said, with COVID, things are hard to get and we had a timeline. So I would like to have got more expensive stuff. But anyway, it does the job and it does the job good. Um, we'll move on. I've added one more thing to this setup that we obviously didn't have prior. Just push that away. Um, and we've got from Dun and Watson. Um, I think I paid seven hundred dollars for this. Um, it is a pull-out pantry, so you can get them on either side. I've I've opted for the left-hand side. So yeah, it's got all our groceries in it. If we want to go away for longer periods without the caravan, like Fraser or something, we don't want to take the van, we'll just put everything in there and um, we just keep a few bits and pieces when I'm cooking outside. But that's, yeah, pretty much it on that side. And then obviously we've got the anti-mozzy light for some light. So, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the um, entertainment side. Yeah. We'll go around the technical side. Come on, let's check. So yeah. this is like, this is still a, a build in pro, progress guys, like uh, we hit the road, but. I like this. So I actually went into ALB to buy the pump and the guy actually thought it was a good idea. I got that from um, um, Bunnings. It's just a small nine meter a hose reel that is the same hose as what the ALB stuff is. And you just connect it, which I'm running a single cylinder ALB pump there. I wanted a double, couldn't get one. Settle for that one. It'll just, it just takes a bit longer to pump the tires up. Um, then we obviously got the power. Now I wanted to go full in and drive system, but couldn't get stock, so I had to split it up. I got 220 amp high tech oil uh, lithium batteries in there, joining to make one battery, so it's 240 amps of lithium. Um, on the top left there, you'll see the shunt for the Cimarron. So all the negatives run through the shunt, and that way the, the screen tells me exactly what's been drawn, how much power's been drawn. Then, over here, I'll stick to the iTech. We've got the 2000 watt inverter, um, which runs the um, induction cooktop um, and charges my all my GoPro stuff and then also runs the coffee machine and so stuff that, now. So that's all to switch to 240 volts. So that'll all run everything. Correct. You can plug into your wall at home, that'll run that. Correct. So just Laptops, you, anything. If you, if you expand just a little bit on the difference between, like, say, the simple 12 volt setup yeah. that's going to a 12 volt control box that just has USB plugs in it. And a cigarette. That can charge so phones maybe, and yeah. cigarette signals. Yeah. It can run, yeah, compressor with relays and stuff on it. It's going to draw more power. Yep. Um, and then just a sort of simple weekend setup with a fridge to, to all of this going yep. on in here. And then, then the inverter. So, so this 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 here essentially powers the car itself, or because you've got you'd have to have a different battery set up for yeah. the van as well. So I've got a different setup for the van. So yeah. So yeah. obviously the um, um, the alternator will send charge into into the um, into the DC DC charger. Yep. Which then um, charges and the um, and you've got the solar mat there as well. I've got the solar yep. mat. I'll explain to you why I've got a um, solar blanket. We did get some rain last night. It's a bit wet. Um, and dirty, yep. but I'll explain to you why I went with the um, blanket and not as a fixed solar panel in a minute. Yep. Um, so basically, yeah, and then we've got in the drive 40 amp DC DC charger. So when I'm driving, it's pumping 40 amps into the batteries. Literally had the batteries down to 50% the other day. I did an hour and a half driving, it was back to 100%. So I had a projector uh, DC DC charger in the Ford Ranger, which could not put out as much as that. And I will say they are pretty good. Mm. And then I've got the inner drive AC charger, so I can plug 240 and it will charge the batteries at the same rate as the DC DC. So when they so if you're in a powered campsite, I would plug that in. Yeah, yes. you'd plug this in and you'd run 240 yeah. volt to charge everything up. Correct. And then if, if you're not at a powered campsite and you're running off grid, then you've got your alternator charging and, and solar, your solar running yeah. into the DC to DC charger to charge That's batteries. It, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the, the guys that installed this um, put that little like um, Anderson sort of 
box there, yep. which is quite clever because yeah, you can just add on. Um, just, yep. And that's just keep and plugging that's, in. Uh, yeah, that's fused and through the shunt as well. So anything yep. I add on to that will the Cimarron screen will yep. tell me what's and going so, on. And so and so regardless of whether you're running on powered campsite 240 into the AC AC charger AC DC charger, sorry, and or you're running off your solar. Um, and your alternator through the DC to DC charger, and no matter what's going on, this inverter will convert it to 240 volts. Correct. So you can charge all your drain batteries, all your laptops, stuff going on. anything. Laptops, yeah. yeah, obviously up to a certain amount. Yeah, I can't run yeah. the. You got to manage cook. it. Yeah, yeah you got to manage it. I can't run the induction cooktop and like a coffee machine. It'll 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 trip. Yeah, um, you just got to do it in, intermittently. I yeah. mean, you can get bigger. But yeah, that's that's more so, than so, enough. So how long did it take you to figure this all out? So we travelled last year for a year. Yeah. This is what I would have liked to have left with, but yep. money and financial. Yep. You yep. and then when you're on the road, you can understand why. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you start building it and building yeah. in your mind and watching other people's yeah. setups and, and stuff. And then you you plan your own one. I mean, this might not work for some people. Um, yeah. Some people go bigger and better. And yeah. but for myself and Sue, this is just it's, it's more than what we need. But because we live full time, this is yeah, yeah, basically exactly our right. power. And that and that's a big difference, eh? From from living full time off grid in a yeah. van to, to going away in the weekend. Yeah. The difference between a simple twelve volt setup just to run a fridge that you can put your beers in and your food that's in it. to cook for two days. Oh, you can don't even need a fridge. You can get away with an Esky. Yeah, well, I've still got, yeah. got an Esky yeah. in the back of my Ute. Still, I haven't right. even got the twelve volt setup. Just, if I'll be honest, like if I was still living in Brizzy doing this weekend and stuff. I wouldn't have this because no. it's overkill, mate. Yeah. So you so you did get halfway around Australia in a Ranger with with a with a, I did. a, a more sort of a, I did. a biggest twelve. I had to change the batteries twice. Yeah. I um yeah, it was a little struggle. So um, it is possible. It is probable. <laughs> it is possible. Yeah. But um, you but you would obviously Yeah, yeah it's just not you can do it. Yeah. But if you ask me if I'm more comfortable than I was with the Ranger, I would be more comfortable with this because yeah. Yeah, it's just got all the cooking stuff I need, and it's just, it just yep. just makes the travel more enjoyable. Yep. Like if you're doing it full time, yeah. But you're going away a weekend, you don't need all this. No, no. You no. know, you can get away with just an Esky. And yeah, like you say. and we'll show at the end of the year once I get that fully fitted yeah. out what you can do in a weekend just with a, with a rig and a swag. That's right. And then and then it's good to see yeah. these sort of full more more permanent sort of full touring setups. Like yeah. This. But one last thing, another thing that you would need touring that you wouldn't need on a weekend is the self high go. So that's to boost internet. Um, Telstra internet um, signal for Sue while she's working on the road and while we're out there but you do need signal to boost so there's no signal that doesn't boost so but you know we just have to have it so that we can try and make sure we got internet signal for during the week with YouTube and, and Instagram and our social media and Sue working we, that's yeah you've got to have something like that so that's you know, just more and more and more and then yeah and you were saying that, look, look, say for instance, if you want to park your van, like say you want to go Fraser Island, you park your van in a in a caravan spot, park it yep. up for you know a week, and then you can actually take this, yeah, can live out throw this. a couple of swags, and you can actually live yeah. out this for yeah, throw for, the swag, for however long you want, yeah, throw the swag on top of the roof, take the tinny off, yep. if you don't want to take the tinny, um, we can take the tinny off, we can throw the swag up there. Yeah. But now this is where the the, the solar comes in because yep. I've got the tinny on. There's nowhere ready for me to get a, a, a fixed solar panel. Yep. So I managed to pick up a 200 watt um, uh, that's, solar that's why you've got blanket. The blanket yeah. So, um, and it also I can move it around a bit. Yeah. Um, I had a fixed solar panel on the on the Ford Ranger. It did quite well actually, but yep. you, you you lose a bit of that sun. At least with this one, if it's shady, I can move the you can the move blanket around. around. There, yeah. Um, a lot of people like it. A lot of people don't like it because it's it's still. Yeah, I see. I see some. Around. I see some people with the racks on the front with the solar, with yeah, solar panel yeah. on the front with the bike loader yeah, as well. I just yeah. Can't, I can't, yeah. For, on, on the way I've got it set up, I just I don't think it's. Yeah, it's not going to work for me. So that's why I opted for that. And 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 tinny on top. So the you bought the tinny to suit the rig, or you bought the rig to suit <laughs> actually, the tinny. Uh, I think it's the rig to suit the, tinny. <laughs> the rig to suit the um, tinny. Yeah. I actually bought that tinny um, when I had the Ford Ranger, and that's what made me have to rethink what towing vehicle I had because. Yeah. It put me over my white, um, yep. and then I didn't. It was sprayed black on top of the Ford, and it just happened to work out like work that. Out but like yeah, that. just a little three and a half meter um, little tinny. Yeah, and a little yep. fifteen horsepower Merc pushes it. Yep, and, and it, it is it electric loader or electric winch electric loader, loader. Yeah, so that runs all off the system in here. All runs yep. off the system. Yeah, I can. You know, um, another thing is like when I'm doing that, I actually just run the car. Yeah, because it draws a lot of power pulling that winch. Um, yeah, and, and you, that and way you can the just DC, run yeah. the alternator through the DC to DC charger. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But that's you know pretty much the rig compared to going away weekends to 
to f this is full time touring. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, this is not even you get bigger and better. Yeah, yeah, People putting microwaves yeah. in, making popcorn on the road and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably could. I just need a bigger uh, inverter. Yeah. And maybe another battery. I could must probably <laughs> you run could a microwave. Go on and on yeah, and on yeah. and on and on. And um, obviously that is a, those were lithium batteries. So. Yeah. When you're traveling full time, weight is an issue. Yeah. So you go lithium, you spend the extra money. Number one, you get way more power. Yeah. Longer, longer life battery, but also it weighs a third of an AGM battery. So yeah. Everything's about weight. And that's the biggest thing too. Like, so for the weekend, the sort of style set up, we've got the swag in there, and I can load up. I can't take enough gear to make that too yeah. heavy for yeah. three or four days. Like, yeah. it's just so, impossible. So, but, and the other thing, Toby and and yeah, as we were saying before, is when you've got kids, then all of a sudden the kids start growing up and then you've got more weight, you've got more clothes, you've got winter gear, you've got all that sort of stuff yep. starts yep. expanding, expanding, yep. expanding, starts throwing your GVM out. Um, and then you've got to start worrying about tinnies on the roof and batteries and yeah. how heavy they yeah. are and yeah. all that sort of yeah. stuff, all that wonderful stuff. So so just going back onto the car itself, you, um, I think we'll get into the van another time. Hopefully we'll, yeah. catch, up. Yeah. we'll yeah. catch up another time and run down the light. So we'll catch up another time and talk about the van and the, and the full touring setup. Um, but the car itself, you, so you bought second hand. Yep, second hand, second hand. And, and then suspension wheels, anything you did? Or? Um, it came with, it come with a, a GVM upgrade. Um, came with it, yep. yeah. Yeah, came with it, so of course you didn't have to do that. Came with a couple of modifications to the car, put these rims and tyres on yep. and had the standard GXL rims and tyres. Yep. I just wanted to change the look of it, to be honest, and get 17s on there. Make it yours, yep. Make it mine, I put the tow mirrors on, I put the, um, the, you'll see two aerials on the ball bar. One is um, UHF, one is self go. Mm -hmm. Bought the boat rack. Yep. Um, pretty much it, mate. Like, where do you, where do you stop? Where yeah. Do you stop, mate? Yeah. Hey. Well, that, that's the, that's the thing I'm worried about. That is like I've, I've actually capped that. So once it, once I get the full fit out, the 12 volt system and the and the rear uh, sort of tub fit out with the drawers and fridge lights and all that sort of stuff, compressors in there, get the lights in there, get the music in there. Uh, I'm going to change that front bar and do the step rails, and then that's capped to that car. So yeah. that's what I'll, and oh sorry, suspension. I'll get the suspension change. Yeah. And then, then that's capped, and I might you know might have fun in that for a year or two. Yep. Um, and then, and then I won't spend any more money on it because I know I'm working towards. A, a bigger touring yeah, setup like this, yeah, so yeah. so that's that's the uh, that's the tricky part is it's setting your limit and fun, that's you it. know because you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars without yeah. blinking the line yeah. and sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean there's so much more you can do to these cruisers. You can get the yeah. 350 extension, you can get the Norwell canopy. This is not a Norwell canopy. I actually don't yeah. know the brand canopy name it is, but it looks good. It works. Yeah. I don't know if it's dustproof yet, but. Figure yeah, it out. Figure it out as we yeah. go along. You can put the toolboxes underneath. You can put the pull-out tray underneath. Yeah. You know, you can keep going and going and going and going. Yeah. But and um, then bigger twelve, volt, bigger system, yeah. bigger. But for us, I think um, we'll 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 does the trick. You know, we'll we'll travel like this for a bit and see how we go. I can see why they do the three fifty extension. I just don't have the money to do that. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah. If you ask me, the Ford Ranger did tow the caravan better than this, but yep. I think I'm just getting used to it. It's yep. old school. It's 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 a bit twitchy on the road. Yep. I don't know if it's just something I just need to get used to. But yeah, yeah, you see, you hear a lot of differences between the 200 series and the 79 yeah. series. Yeah. A lot of lot, there's, it sort of divides the internet well yeah. a little bit with it between yeah. the 79 and 200. But obviously, 200s is a whole different world. Yeah, but. I had an option to buy obviously a 200 or this same price, second hand. But I wanted the canopy. This is, yep. suits me more than having just like a boot or whatever yep. you want to call it, um, yep. trunk. Yep. Um, this is more for, and then the tinny on top. And then you got the top 200s, and then all yeah, of a sudden you're no, into the 200s of 10,000. Yeah, another league, yeah. Yeah, another league yeah. No worries. Well, awesome. It's an awesome rig, and that's obviously what yeah, the, uh, the differences between the weekend yeah. setup and the full touring setup. Correct. And, and yeah. hopefully we, we catch up another day when we've got a bit more light, we'll go through the van as yeah. well. But yeah. I think everyone that starts out on that weekend, weekend the series setup is aspiring to the full touring oh, setup, so it's, you know, good, you, it's, it's good, good to, to go it's, through It's it. good to start, um, yeah. you know, just weekend as if, so if it's something you want to really get serious into, then like, at least you know what you're going for, and you, yeah. you've got an idea of what you want, and you can build from it, you know? Yeah. That's what we did, I mean, we didn't know that this stuff even existed, <laughs> yeah, no. until no. you actually get involved no. in it and, and, and need it. Yeah. But, yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome, mate. Derek, thank you very much. No Derek, from just spending it, thank you very much. Beautiful afternoon. Temperature's perfect, weather's good. Uh, we've got the roast on, so um, gonna have dinner in a couple of hours, so it's gonna be a good night.
bulldog in its natural habitat. <laughs> We'll head back and uh, check on the roast, eh, Toby? Yeah, it's yeah, a good journey. Good long drive up here, but it's worth it to see a sunset like that on the beach. We'll get back and we'll try the drone up, try yeah, back a couple more beers and have a feed. Check you guys in. Dual roast, about five kilos of meat, lamb and beef roast. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So he's giving us some, what is it, vegetable stock, Sue? Oh. And garlic, yeah, we might throw that in there now and I'll just spin them around a little bit. Is that a red heart? I'm not helping. Do you mind just pouring some vegetable stock in the no. sort of pan? Sort of fill up towards the trivet a bit. Okay. Yeah. And then okay. 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 we need. Can we cut the potatoes up then? The... Yeah, the, the, the veggies are going to go into that. Um, Is there a trivet for that? Toby? What's that? Morning guys, just Morning. woke up, had a coffee, um, just going for a walk down the beach. Uh, had a good uh, cook up last night. Tim outdid himself again. The uh, old double stack camp oven. Yeah, everyone put in a uh, couple of roasts, some vegetables, garlic bread. Five kilos of meat in the big camp oven and then all the veggies in the other one and I stacked them on top of each other. So yeah, it was, that, it was actually really good. Yeah, it was a very nice, yeah. very nice feed. And now we're just going for a walk down the beach and have a look at this. <laughs> Got the beautiful Fraser Island in the background there. The girls are having a 
fish. <laughs> oh, look at this. Like, I, I honestly I wish, I wish we were here. Like, I'm glad we come up just one night. It's a massive drive for me. It's been about five hours in the car, but I'm glad we did. Beautiful, but I wish we were here for at least two or three days. Oh, man, it'd be nice to stay for I'd a week. I'd sit here. I'm right here and fish for two days. Beautiful, clear water. We're just heading back to make a coffee and this pulled up. <laughs> so good. guys episode seven that's a wrap up uh yeah thanks for hanging out um it's been a great weekend catching up with some friends uh check them out two thirsty travelers and just fanning it so um i'll put the link in the description but yeah definitely check them out yeah we love in skip point um we, we originally planned to go to uh, lake mugra but toby and yasmin very good friends of ours absolute legends um so they were coming up here to catch up with derek and sue so we thought we'd join them um, so we, we hiked up here and, and met Chris and Carla from Two Dosy Travellers, which is, which is good. So, and got to check out um, Derek's new 79 series and, and show you the differences between sort of the weekend to set up, like mine I'm building over the next six months, and a full touring set up, living off grid like, like Derek's 79 series. So, yeah, that was really good. So, yeah, thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us and hope you enjoy a little bit of Inskip Point. We've got the beautiful Fraser Island behind us. It's, it's absolutely wonderful up here. So, yeah, I highly encourage you to come up and have a look. All right, thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you again soon. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and then the notifications bell to keep up with our latest episodes. Um, yeah, it really helps us out. Hope you enjoy.